Folks, what's going on? Heir of Carthage back, and yes, Patchy the Demon Prince is back amongst us. Sorry the end of the week was a little bit slow, but there was a couple of challenges that were a little unforeseen. I did get to stream with you all and put out another X Marks the Spot campaign with Luther. I hope you appreciated that one. Um, one thing that I could not get past was that there was an internet outage uh, in my area, so... <laughs> That's a bit challenging, right? When I don't have internet, uploading becomes difficulty. Uh, they got it fixed. Everything seems to be back in order, which is nice. Um, so that's taken care of. However, um, then YouTube had like this gigantic monetization issue that impacted like a ton of people on the platform, myself included. Um, so I was not able uh, to upload because of that, because everything was messed up from a monetization standpoint. However, I think things are looking up now, and I am back recording and trying to have a good weekend. Um, and you know what? It has been pretty good. Got to go out. My my little boy was all proud of himself. Um, he had started learning how to ride a bike pretty early and was doing quite good at it. And then got all worried and like lost his confidence. I'm not sure exactly why, uh, but kind of lost his confidence and had to be reassured that he could do it so I got him back up on the bike he was riding his bike he was proud of himself it was a good weekend I was glad to see that had a good time with both my boys we played No Man's Sky which released on the Switch had a good time doing that of course and uh yeah just a good weekend so far nice nice break from the normal being at the office and what will go even more nicely now is getting in some good Warhammer 3 campaign so I'm excited to be on here with y'all um Sigvald wants a peace treaty I'm not giving it to him, because that'll just make the Legion of the Gore Queen mad at me. She's got him sieged up. He's about to be destroyed. That's why he's begging for peace. Um, he's trying everything he can to, to get himself out of the fire. Um, and uh, he's going down. Like, yeah. Okay, it's over. So I'm pretty sure he... I thought he would be destroyed from that. Apparently he's still got something somewhere. Maybe like a unit or two, I don't know. But um, I'm pretty sure that he is otherwise gone. Faction emerges, Varg. Um, so we can now continue our war against Wintertooth, uh, which is my uh, next objective. Um, so we've got our army all healed up. Honestly, it's pretty it's pretty strong. I mean, about the only thing that's here that I don't want is I'd like to get rid of the Sibilant Slaughter Cave. And um, probably swap this one out um, for one of the other Regiment of Renown Skull Crushers that I think will do us a whole lot more good. Um, we've also got these Knights of Immolation, which we should swap swap out for the Chaos Furies. Um, so let's bring in the Heralds of Corn's Fury. Well, actually, we get to take our pick here. We got the Knights of the Brazen, which is an anti-infantry. Uh, both of these are anti-infantry. Heralds of Corn's Fury. 61, 53. So these are Blood Crushers, and I'm guessing this one is the Skull Crusher. Skull Crushers, I think, ultimately are quite a lot stronger. The interesting thing is, is that the upkeep is cheaper on these. So let's take the Knights of the Brazen. Bring that one in. And I'm going to go ahead and ditch these um, spawn here. This is going to hurt our income, of course. Um, in fact, I don't have enough money to bring in that one next. Um, but let's just go to... Let's go ahead and move over to the Folly of Malifex. I'm going to kind of keep moving back over to where I can come take the fight to Wintertooth. Um, so yeah, there we go. I'm going to have to deal with a lot of leadership issues here in the Northern Waste, but trying to do a little bit of building there. Will there at least be a decent garrison in place? Um, we may lose those. Not super worried about it one way or the other, because um, I'm pretty sure that uh, Valkia's faction would just come in and settle that down anyway. Anyway, let's get to some of your comments. Kill Scribe is keeping track of the number of kills. And I don't know if you all know it or not, but Hag Grief has sacrificed 7,145 of their souls to Patchy's Demon Campaign. And I appreciate that. I mean, Patchy appreciates that. It's very kind of them. Uh, we have a treaty with these guys, and I don't really want the treaty with these guys. So I'm not going to get further treaties with them, at least at the moment. Because um, we do have to basically go in and, and pacify Norska here as one of the requirements but kill scribe thanks for keeping up with the skills you're making an awesome reaper here in this campaign and it is great to have your character gallivanting around with this um let's pull in knights of immolation there we go so yeah our army is pretty brutal at the moment pretty brutal i want to get to the monolith of flesh so 
I'm gonna kind of just keep marching back that way. We'll save up a little cash, because, I mean, our army costs a lot more now. Um, there is probably upgrades and building upgrades you can go through, but again, money's gonna be a little short. Best way to get money is just to keep fighting. So we're gonna scoot on down that way. Let's get a couple more of your comments while I'm taking this opportunity to get to where I need to go. Um, the first comment was from Edog Eth... Eth... No, I'm YouTube. I can't pronounce it. I, I apologize. He says, man, I still can't help stop laughing at how funny the name Patchy the Demon Prince is. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Patchy is quite a character. Quite a character. He's he's uh, been beloved on the channel for a long time now. So, yeah. Appreciate you watching. Thank you for taking the time to leave a comment. By the way, I have to say thank you as well. I have this new little tool that I've been using to help me try and track metrics and get better keywords and, and all that stuff which has been very enlightening for me to learn a little bit about the performance of my YouTube channel and why it does what it does. And I have to say thank you to you all because we had really good engagement on this episode, or in the last episode. Um, it rated you as great engagement from the audience there. So thank you. And I would ask that if you don't mind, if you're watching this and you enjoy it when you get done with it, if you had a good time with it, leave a comment. Go click the like button. That kind of stuff helps a lot. Um, that engagement from you is basically a way for you to help boost my channel, and it doesn't cost you money. It doesn't cost anybody any money, so it is definitely a good way to help out should you feel inclined to do so. I would appreciate it. Um, let's get to some more of your comments here. Inductive Grunt says, more patchy op awesomeness time. Uh, death to mortals, long live patchy. Well, oh, my power of course, patchy can't really die, right? He's transcended different um, universes, in fact, um, to even end up in the position that he's in here in the Warhammer universe, so dying isn't something that he's into, I don't think. <laughs> uh, Michael says, also, Air, I know you're broken, uh, or you're broke right now, but don't forget that you can use seduced unit mechanic, even with your settlements. Probably would save some of your settlements without you having to fight in it. That's true. I'll keep a look uh, an eye on that as uh, we get the opportunity. So thanks for the reminder. That is not something I've used a lot. I did play a Slanesh campaign early on in Warhammer 3, back when it had first released. I didn't show it on my channel, but we did. I did play a Slanesh campaign. It was fun. Slanesh is a lot of fun to play because they very, very powerful, um, and they can cause a ton of damage. They move around the battlefield very rapidly, which is pretty entertaining. Um, so yeah, I, I, I had a good time with it. All right, we're gonna have a decent garrison here if we keep it up. So, which will help because we're probably gonna see rebellions there. All right, um, let's continue. Save a little bit of cash. Like I said, we could use the cash here from fighting Norska. So we'll kind of cross over from Bilius Cliffs on over to the Monolith of Flesh. We'll just start chunking our way through Wintertooth, and then we'll have to deal with um, with Wolfric when the time comes. He's looking a little stronger. Get a couple more comments in here. Uh, Black Winter says, I personally hope you get back to more cinematic battles. I rarely ever see them in other Total War content creators, and they make your videos awesome. Either way, keep up the good work. Well, you are in luck, sir, because tonight's episode will be cinematic battles. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to try and mix and match them a little bit. Um, some nights I may do all of them that way. Other nights I'm probably going to try and mix and match because some people like watching the videos in order to learn a little bit. Um, and then other people enjoy watching the cinematics and just the cinematics. Understandable. Um, however, uh, like I said, I will kind of alter a little, like alternate potentially, depending on how things are going. Um, so I haven't heard from you all on whether or not uh, how we do these good um, mixed settlements here. So let me make sure I'm going to swing through the comments here and see if you'll answer that. Uh, yeah, I don't see any in there. So if you all have any good recommendations on how you mix and match um, provinces, let me know. Okay? Um, otherwise, I'm going to probably throw like a little bit more... I don't have a complete province for Zinch yet. Um, I have like parts of some, so I may just go ahead and try and throw this one for Zinch. Uh, we gained a Burning Chariot for Appius. Patchy Seamster. He'll be uh, riding around in glory up in the sky, and that's a good thing. We've got Final Transmutation, Arcane Conduit, and Earthing. All of those are going to be quite important. Um, Plague of Rust, we probably want to max that out. And training could be good as well. But let's do let's max out Plague of Rust. Um, it can be an important one at helping us 
whittle down um, a, a powerful bow. Just save our cash. We didn't get a ton of cash from that one. Uh, there was an army here previously. It looks like the Skaven actually own most of this province. And I just made a non-aggression pack with them, so Wintertooth is all bottled up. What is the thing here? Raid the following region, the Monolith. Gain favor. Well... Let's talk terms. But with any I need to cancel my non-aggression pack with Wolfric, because we are going to be fighting him. I'm going to end that. If I declare war on them, then I, I get in trouble. Um, see, like, declare war. Got ten turns of not being able to clear one. That is so long. I need to mod that. <laughs> Just irritating. Um, so, yeah. Got to deal with them. End our turn here. That's just going to waste a bunch of time that I'm not thrilled about. I just made an agreement with the rats, too, I think, when I clicked on it. Otherwise, we could have beaten their butts out a little bit. But, you know, the rats are not really part of my agenda. I was told I got to get Norska. We got to take out the Empire and Kislev. Those are objectives. So the rats, I guess, get to stay. Uh, Mustafa Ahmed says, Notification Squad. Thank you for being part of that, Mustafa. I really appreciate you. hh for a leaves me a heart there in chat. Well, I will leave you a heart on your comment. Thank you. Appreciate you being here. Alon says... It's a corn. Uh, when you add butter, uh, everything changes. <laughs> corn and butter are an excellent combination indeed. Um, I don't need to do any recruiting, so let's just take the extra favor here. It's only this one settlement I'm seeing. Well, Varg Camp. There's a little bit of winter tooth activity over here, so let's go ahead and march for it. Let's see if we can get into a fight with them. This province, I'm not expecting much from this province. It's probably going to be kind of hard to maintain it, but we'll we'll try. Um, I'll go ahead and pour a little bit of money into it. I'm not going to go absolutely ham. Whiff of Beast. Blood Mountain's kind of stabilizing here, and we have a decent garrison, so that's good. They're raiding me at Palace of Princes, but these guys are just jerks. Let's take a look at what our... Starting to get a decent garrison. There's a lot too many Nurglings, unfortunately. The Nurglings are pretty crappy. Plague Bears are pretty good. Though ultimately, Nurglings are probably pretty good for their price. Um, they're just kind of weak. You know, that, that is what Nurglings are. All right, let's uh, go ahead and end our turn again. We don't want to spend too much of our cash. we got to sit on just a little bit of a buffer here. Be safe. Let me go through a few more of these comments. Senshi. Uh, says Patchy, the Chaos Demon adds some very shiny clothes, and everywhere they looked, the algorithm said, "Oh, oh, men 232 <laughs> corn hub." I mean, you discovered Iowa. P.S. Corn I35 uh, taught you something. So, <laughs> Senshi, you are. Oh wow! Here comes the warhost of the apocalypse. Uh, where are they at? Are they off to our east, maybe. Great. Can, can I just fight Wintertooth? Like, is this a thing that I'm going to be allowed to do? I've got the war host of the apocalypse over here to my east. <laughs> well, you know what, Wintertooth? One of these days, one of these days, we're going to come fight you. Okay? I promise. Be back, all right? Just chill. And we can't really get our fightiness meter up here as much as I want either because of that. Um, so, yeah, we got the war host of the apocalypse right on our doorstep. So, we're going to need to... Get back across the, the straits here and go face down our Kaon. Because he's going to be moving into our territory here rather quickly. All of the index. We got okay ish garrisons through here. Nothing nothing spectacular. Blood letters. Uh, Bilious Cliff. We could go ahead and put a little extra garrison there. And then we may want to do the same if we ever build up that one. Probably use a little bit of favor here, too, because we're not generating much income. Yeah, we're still being raided over there. And uh, somehow Sigvald's faction didn't get extincted, so they must own something somewhere else. But at least Valkia's kind of got them in check. Um, let's get over here and take out Archaeon. Make him the Never Chosen. Uh, Creighton says, Corn Star Dancing. <laughs> I love it. Omar says, Can you rename the Hellforge host into the Corn Baked Goods? I don't see why not. Uh, John Delaney says, Blood Reapers get mounts, uh, both mounts in the same level is kind of weird. Yeah, it is. That threw me off. Like, I didn't quite um, understand what was going on there. And then uh, 
Bleden Wolf says Chaos Fury should be called the Angry Birds. Well, we could rename our Doom Knights that because they do fly around. Um, they're not as bird-like as the uh, the Furies, but anyway, let's take care of a couple names here. We gotta no 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 no. Where are you going? Don't don't do these things, okay, Patchy? Let's go where I need you to. I keep needing you to go to Wintertooth, but then it never happens. All right, uh, we were supposed to rename the Hellforge Coast to Corns. Baked Goods. Patchy likes Baked Goods, so I'm all for that. And then we're going to rename these guys the Angry Birds. And you know, that actually kind of makes sense, because they're in Zinch faction, you know, right? Zinch has all the lords that are shaped like birds, so I feel like that's appropriate. I feel like that's very appropriate. All right, I'm going to end a couple of turns, and I'll come back to you all when I'm ready to face down the war host here. You know, if things ever made sense or were easy, look at all the territory I own. Like, I own all this territory across here. We can barely afford the army we have. And, of course, um, all the way across my territory, after I've moved, here comes... I knew I should have killed this guy. Uh, this idiot's declared war on me and immediately sieged my settlement. And so now I'm going to lose a whole bunch of territory back over here while needing to face Archaon from the other flank. And Archaon isn't someone we can exactly ignore, right? He's going to be pretty powerful. So it's kind of irritating how we're trying to defend opposite ends of the map. And of course, the AI is just going to randomly declare war on us all the time. That is strange indeed. Now, one thing that's interesting to me about the AI in this game is that I feel like they're not aggressive in the ways they need to be. So like right here, the Beastmen coming and declaring war on me. Why? Why would the Beastmen come to the Realms of Chaos and declare war on me? Wouldn't they be like out killing mortals, killing men, all that kind of... It's just random, right? They come up here and declare war on me. They didn't declare war on me. I'm the only one they're war at. They are not at war with anybody else on the map, except for me. Just, it's a strange decision. Um, now, I like aggression from the AI in the sense that when they do declare war on you, they send their armies in seeking decisive victory, not just taking like little one-off settlements. So I would like to see more of that type of aggression from the AI. And I would like to see less of the idiotic type of aggression. We're about to lose a whole bunch of our bonuses here if we don't get in some fights soon. Because it has been way too long since we fight. Um, here is our Kaon. I don't know whether or not he's going to want to fight us. So what I'm going to do is move up in an ambush stance and sit right outside of the Folly of Vindex. And hopefully our Kaon will move against it. Because, you know, again, it's kind of like the, the AIs crack. They're addicted to... Um, fighting your unguarded settlement. So let's see. I don't know. Maybe we'll get a big fight right away against the Ever Chosen. Be good if we could. Then we can push through his territory, knock him out, do anything we need to do to go resecure our territory, and then get back after Norska. And I'm sure the next idiot will declare war on me after that. But hopefully at some point we have enough money. Look at this. It worked. So we pulled our Kaon into a beautiful ambush. He is going to get ripped a new butthole here because his forces are terrible and ours are awesome. Should make for some fun cinematic views, so enjoy this one. So the Folly of Vendex may have to be renamed to the Never Chosen because Patchy was able to catch Archaon, the supposed Ever Chosen. You can see him, he's going to be coming forward here using his new magic, whipping out fireballs, bringing down Searing Doom. We've already got a Spirit Leech going on back here, so Archaon is going ham. And he thinks he's going to make it to this escape point, but he is certainly mistaken. I mean, CA honestly needs to just change these escape points because it forces you into, like, kind of a weird blob battle in these. But whatever. The Mirror Guard intercepts Archaon, and Patchy is going to come pay him a visit. We will see who the Ever Chosen is. Now, I do expect a very tough fight here from Archaon, as he is one of the tougher characters. And his forces are just going to plow headlong into my troops. Now, his troops have no chance here. None. Um, even when they're going to get uh, what they think is a good engagement, like, for instance, Korn's baked goods here, the Hellforged Host, they're going to be ripping through these knights. The knights will get some good attack on the charge, but then the armor will be shredded and destroyed by all of these, um, oh, what do they call them here? Blood, blood re uh, great sword. I don't know. I forget the name of them because we named over them. Blood Reapers? I don't know. Bloodthirsters. No, Bloodthirsters the big demon. I don't know why I'm confused at the moment on the name of Bloodletters. That was the name I was looking for. Holy crap. Anyway, we've got the horns 
uh, mortal infantry over here holding the other flank, and these marauders are, of course, no match for them. Patchy is still duking it out with Archaeon. The Mirror Guard is helping him hold his position. I've also got the Severed Claw in here. Um, helping Patchy out, and it is a heavyweight fight. Like, Patchy has taken some pretty severe damage, yet so has Archaeon. Uh, ultimately, I think we're gonna be able to do okay here, but like I said, these are two very strong characters dueling it out here. I've been using the magic from Appius uh, to rip away at armor, and to uh, also use Final Transmutation to help me against Archaeon, because just 1v1, I'm pretty sure Archaeon takes that fight against Patchy in his current state. We got Scribe over here on his lawnmower, and he is causing some beautiful damage. And of course, we got the Doom Knights here ripping in. So these are our angry birds coming down from the sky. <laughs> Man, these are some beautiful looking unit models. I wish I had some of these painted up for tabletop. But heavens, those look awesome. Because each has some really pretty units. Um, in any case, there we go. We're going to have an, a gateway coming up from Patchy 2 because he can do that. But it actually got canceled because it's in combat. A bit of an explosion going off there. Archaeon is now being routed, I believe, or near routed. Patchy's trying to finish him off before he can escape. And we definitely want the kill on Archaeon. Yeah, you can see he's trying to flee. He's got this pile of spawn, uh, which is actually kind of keeping him from getting him away. But at the same time, CA, please. And look at this. All I need to do is just swing the sword and kill him. And for some reason, it's taken like three years for Patchy to, uh, to actually just swing his sword and finish Archaeon off, even though he's literally standing right in front of me. So, not really sure what's going on with that there. Let's see if Patchy can actually get in position to make a blow here, because Archaeon's on his deathbed. There he goes. So Archaeon is knocked out. His forces are retreating, and they are going to be hunted down and slaughtered like the pigs they are. So you can see here, I've got my Seekers of Slanesh seeking their souls here. These very quick-moving units. And they're going to tear across the battlefield and come over here and start shredding into all these routing marauders. They are a juicy target indeed. Let's start racking up the kills. Oh yeah, looking good. So an ambush successful, Archaon beaten, and his territory will now be open for our invasion. All right, folks, so that was a good result there. Um, we got a ton of favor, quite a lot of experience for Patch. He picked up a Trickster Shard, beat Archaon's main force there. Which means we should be in a good position to really just push back hard on our Kaon. I'm going to go ahead and just keep pushing some corn glory here, just for fun. And then of course, here's the Beastmen that I mentioned earlier being freaking past. What? They actually they turned it into a blood ground, so we're going to have to go deal with them later. I'll go ahead and give Wolfric his non-aggression pack back, since I'm not going to be fighting him anywhere in the next 10 turns, which is quite obvious. Oh, <laughs> jeez. Now we end up in these situations pulled from one side of the map to the next. It's pretty frustrating. All right, so we lost a province, but we didn't end up losing a ton of money. And we're about to push into our Kaon's territory and start taking all of his stuff. Um, is I'm trying to see, who are these guys? Are they the vassal for... I think they're a vassal for our Kaon, so Tong... Um, yeah, vassal of the, the ever chosen here. So let's go and take their court of secrets. And the secret here is that they suck, and we're taking their settlement. So how do you like that? We got another army back there for our Kaon, though. If it's as bad as his first one, we ought to be in pretty safe shape. There we go. Take their settlement. I keep wanting to build something for Zinch. Maybe we're going to try again here. Um, this will be the changing of ways for Archaeon. We're going to be changing him over to Zinch. Um, let's see here. Oh yeah, that works out, because we already had Volcano's Heart. Um, and now we just need to take the Crystal Spires. Kind of small army there, though probably dangerous um, to the Volcano's Heart, because it's not a particularly um, tough province. We need to put in stuff to help with. Control, probably need to go ahead and build up the Port of Secrets a little bit here. Folly of Vindex is going to be fairly well defended. Um, it's not great, but an army like that may have problems um, getting in, so we'll see. But we got that. Like I said, we got some um, experience points for Patchy. I was finishing Intimate Allies here, which was dropping the upkeep on any of our Slaneshi units. We do have a number of fairly expensive Slaneshi units. Other than that, like I think I'm going to just maybe see if there's any more 
Let's see, Bloodthirsters. We don't have those. Soul Grinders. Nothing yet there. Bloodthirsters. War Shrines. Soul Grinders. Uh, we do have some uh, Blood Crushers and Skull Crushers now. We may have more uh, moving forward, so that could be good. Attrition casualty suffered. You know, actually, this may be worthwhile. Not having quite as much attrition. Reinforcement range reduction. I mean, that could also be nice. Um, let's let's take the attrition reduction. Um, because you never know when that might come in handy. May may save us from losing too many troops. Let's see here. We finished Plague of Rust. That is a good one to have. Um, I feel like we'll do some work on Hounds. Hounds can be a decent blobbuster in the right scenario. It's a little unpredictable, so it's not my favorite spell by any mean. We have really low defense, and that one was adding to our defense. Wow, that defense is up. Holy cow. Play attack, crush, weapon strength, and charge bonus. Let's go ahead and just throw... The melee attack and continue um, to buff these here. We could always switch them over to the Juggernaut. We'd have a whole lot more melee um, strength on the Juggernaut, but I think it changes like the kind of splash and chariot damage type area of effect that that unit um, carries for the most part. Uh, so the Beastmen hit us here, but we can make some of these other territories a little bit more challenging for them to take over. Like Twisted Towers is gonna be a bit of a mess for them to try and take and if we build up some of these others we can at least slow them down for now right um try and keep them mostly out of the fight let's go ahead and end another turn here continue our fight against Archaeon I do appreciate you all uh, like I said participating in the comments I love it I think we do have another one here I haven't read yet uh, this one from Thomas he says Patchy the Demon Prince Kill, kill Scribe the Bloodletter and Appius the Horror um Thordilius the Plague Bearer and Sextus the demonet. <laughs> Sorry if I butchered the names. Uh, he may be thinking of Terilius. Um, I think Terilius was like the the uh, chronicler on our other campaigns. So if we do get the next army, we'll probably be with Sextus and Terilius. Terilius, of course, was a big character in our. It says we're not going to win this. This is irritating. Like, I don't want them getting behind my lines and taking more settlements. So I'm going to move over here and try and chase them back across to the Crystal Spires. I want to force them back into their settlements so I can just start beating them back um, without letting them get an army up here that tries to push through um, some of my minor settlements. We don't want to allow that. Um, let's go ahead and upgrade at the Forest of Decay while we have a little bit of cash. Um, this gives us... A lot more recruiting capability, skull cannon, war shrines, soul grinders, and skull crushers eventually. These blood crushers, yeah. We have to have a certain amount of glory for them as well. Speaking of, let's go check out the demonic glory here. We've probably got access to some new body parts that we can take a look at. Up here on the head, we've been using this corn head here, which is us fueled by rage, gore feast, 10 melee attack, and then extra 10% armor piercing. Uh, the next one here, that, at least from a corn standpoint, um, is going to give us uh, fuel by rage still. We get frenzy instead of gore feast. Now, gore feast is where it replenishes hit points, and honestly, that's pretty good. That's pretty really good, actually. I think I'm going to keep that for now. If we go to, like, broken horns, we could get the purple sun, which would be pretty neat. All for power. Um, yeah, I mean, that's those are pretty handy. It gives them more hit points overall, but I really like Upgraded Phantasmagoria, Arcane Mirth, Zinch's Firestorm would be an amazing uh, blob buster. Final Transmutation. So I got some good one. I actually kind of like Gorefeast because we can just get into melee and go. Uh, let's take a look here. We've been using the Spiked Collar, which gives us Tempered Rage, which gives him damage resistance, which each kill earned. And of course, we could get that again here with the Trophied Collar, which I think... Um, is just an improved version of that that also gives us plus 15 melee defense. So I feel like that's kind of a nice upgrade. Burning Rage, Tempered Rage, the Stomach Ban, Spell Resistance, Physical Resistance. I like this one. I mean, an extra bunch of melee defense is never... Let's go with Trophied Collar. Looking quite, quite good there. Armored Chaotic Body. Large Exploding Effect. Winds of Change. Yeah, let's stick with that for now. We're going to take a look at our wings here. So we're using the Bestial Wings. Uh, this next one 
Could potentially give us a little more speed. This one gives us 20 charge bonus. That one's see, uh, or that's only a 20%. We get extra melee defense though instead of speed. The current wings we have give us extra speed, which not bad. Um, cloud of flies. Extra nine melee defense if engaged in melee. Wow. Pretty cool. Gives us extra 10 armored. Armored pestilent wings. What is bloodthirst here? So bloodthirst is like kind of a temporary augment. I mean, it might be better to bring on these uh, pestilent wings here. I mean, that's a pretty sweet... Physical resistance, Melkos, Miasma, Arcane Flight. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with this Pestilent Decay here. Because that's... Like I said, it's going to give us... Um... Well, that causes... Oh, no, that's the one we already using. Cloud of Flies. So Pestilent Decay is what we've been using because it's giving us an area of effect damage. I mean, that's pretty good. 16 to 32. Cloud of Flies, though, is an extra 9 melee defense. But it's only effective on us. Um, I think I'm going to keep these wings here. they be working out pretty good for me. Let's check out the new arms that we've got. Light armored gauntlets. So this one gives us melee attack and defense bonuses. The spiked gauntlets give us extra armor. Armor piercing weapon damage. Fate of Buna. Ooh, Buna would be pretty nice. Transmutation of lead. Infernal Gateway would be absolutely brutal. Uh, it takes a ton of magic, though. It takes a ton of magic, and we'd be giving up the other benefits there. Just all the extra armor and damage. I think I'm just going to go with the Spiked Gauntlets. It's going to take our total damage down one, but I think give us more AP. Um... Not gonna change our armor because we're already getting plus 20 from there. Yeah, I just don't know if we're gonna have a lot of. I don't know, we might switch to some of the, more of that magic stuff later, but let's just keep going through here. Deathbringer. Spiked ones, so. What are we using right now? Um, using the heavy bracers, I think. Yeah, which is giving us the Plague of Rust and the Gate of Chaos here. Blue Fire is a pretty cool spell that doesn't take a lot of magic and does a ton of damage to other large entities. And we still get the Gate of Chaos, so I mean, that could be pretty slick. Um, passive ability for the Slaughter here. This one would be pretty sick, too. Oof, yeah, I mean, that for the Slaughter would be pretty darn nice. A lot of good stuff here that's gonna make this tough. Storm of Corruption. Um, dang. Yeah, we got a lot of good options here. Um, let's let's just try something different here. Let's go for the slaughter. See how that works out. We got the spiked gauntlets, the right arm, left arm. Ah, okay, so that yeah, that's giving us more armor. I feel like the armor is gonna be good. Been using cloven hooves here. It's giving us a massive charge bonus. Charge bonus is pretty good, but let's see what else here. Devastating flanker could be cool. Because if we take the devastating flanker, then any rear charge we put on with Patchy, which is quite possible because of the way that he's um, charging in from the air, right? So that that could be pretty sick. Yeah, Devastating Flanker might be good. Let's try that. So we'll switch into these more ornate legs here. Give that a go. Um, let's move over to the tail. Our current tail is the spiked... Or the tail of many teeth, which is, again, causing damage to combatants around, which is pretty cool. And we got the tail of many mouths here, which maintains that. Um, and it looks like... Um, Slightly different. Not not much difference there. That's nothing to be excited about, I don't think. Let's... Slime Trail. Affects enemies in range. Now, that's pretty cool. Takes away melee attack and speed. We got Serpentine Tail up here, which is a direct damage here, too. Then we get an extra 5 defense. That gives us some physical resist. What about this one? Keep 
you know, buffing the defense up. We'll switch to the, the corn tail there. Still says we have some new tails. We haven't seen all of these. So let's go down to hand weapon. Okay, as far as the hand weapon goes, we've got a lot of different options here. Like a ton of options. I'm kind of thinking about taking the Great Lance here, though, because it gives us a bonus versus large that I think would come in very handy. Um, so I think I'm going to pull this one. It's going to give us extra weapon strength and then an extra 20 bonus versus large. So let's throw in the Lance for now. Take a look at the offhand. There is a new shield here. Gives us the same missile block chance. Um, does not give us the missile resistance, but instead switches for physical resistance. So I don't think there's any reason to switch shields. And then there's two-handed weapons um, that we could take a look at. Um, but then, of course, that takes away our shield. And I kind of like the extra melee defense. This makes us a pretty good duelist right here. So I'm going to keep this as it is um, for now. Swap things up just a little bit. And um, we've got a new hero here. Well, we, they said when we got a plague bear that we would give them a name. So um, I guess this is going to be Terhilius. I don't remember exactly how to spell his name, but I think this is going to be close. Yes, I don't know. Chronicler. All right. So we'll take Terilius here. Might walk this way over towards the Beastman army and see if we can jack with them. Um, all right. I might eventually start another army there. Put a lord in it, but right now I think we're good. I'm going to save a little bit of cash. End our turn. All right, folks, I had skipped a couple turns just to make sure you didn't have to sit and watch anything you shouldn't. And um, the Warhost of the Apocalypse um, showed up. I had their settlement sieged. They had a big garrison. And then they've also got reinforcements that came in. So we're up against a rather large force of chaos. But you know what? It gives us an opportunity to rack up some kills for the kill scribe. So let's get that done. All right, how many armies does it take for our Chaos forces to try and bring down Patchy the Demon Prince? One? No. Two? No. Three. Three. It takes three armies. And that is what they're going to want here. And they're going to be getting a ton of reinforcements. You can see our enemy here. And here he is, the sorcerer, the chaos sorcerer, defending the settlement. And we've got Patchy's army coming in. I'm cruising along in formation. I'm hoping to kind of hit these guys on a flank, bottle them up, and force them into a fight where it kind of compacts them against my front line. I don't know exactly how the AI is going to react to me. Uh, moving over to the side of the battlefield, you can see they're using a little bit of Spirit Leech here on my Seekers. They'll kill a model or two, but it's not going to cause any real significant damage. Uh, but, so they started moving some of their units out to the far flank in response to my move, uh, movements. And this was some of their more mobile units. They had sent some Hounds, and they have some Marauder Horsemen and other stuff out here. So I decided that I would take my Quick Movers and try and move against that flank and see if I can get a decisive engagement against some of their units early, um, and then we'll kind of see how they react after that. Um, so their units saw mine coming, and they end up deciding that they do think they want the fight here, so my Seekers are going to slam into their Hounds, and I've got my Flesh Hounds coming in to stop their Chariots, I've got my uh, Doom Knights coming in, so our Angry Birds, and the AI just decides to go absolutely bananas and just throw everything they have into this fight. So they're going to start just sending absolutely everything in this direction. All their infantry, all their reinforcements, and it's going to turn into a big blob over here that's going to last the entirety of the battle. Now, Patchy, on the other hand, needs to be seeking uh, the main foe here, which is going to be the enemy sorcerer. So I'm kind of waiting for that enemy sorcerer to approach, and I'm going to attack him with Patchy. You can see that he is using some of his magic to uh, dodge a little bit of it. It'll take a little damage here, but not too bad. I've got the mirror guard coming in to soak up the initial charges. And um, I've got the corn mower back here with Scribe mowing through some hounds. Unfortunately, he's going to take off chasing them and be absent from the battle for a little while. But here comes Patchy with his new halberd in hand. And he should slice through this um, Chaos Sorcerer extremely quick. And he does, but he just rips him a new one. Patchy has some pretty sick attack stats now. And so he sends him packing from the battle very quickly. There's a bunch of trolls and armored trolls around. Patchy, again, ought to be able to rip through because he's now geared for these anti-large fights, so I would assume he should be KOing troll models on just about every hit here. Um, otherwise, I've got my units fighting all across the battlefield. The Severed Claw has the worst of it here. They get entirely surrounded. These are aspiring champions. 
So these are not units that are going to give up easily, despite being in a huge and desperate fight. I do have some reinforcements coming for them. It's going to be the Hellforged Host. With this giant blob of infantry, this is the Hellforged Host dream come true. If they get out of that blob of infantry, it should be pretty interesting. It looks like their sorcerer came back after being routed, um, and I had to take Patchy off elsewhere. And he has chased off yet another sorcerer over here, so this is his second sorcerer that he's pushed back. And then just magic and everything I can to hold this fight at bay. There's so much infantry, though. I'm starting to lose my Seekers, and it's starting to turn into a little bit more of a slog over here than I wanted, though. We've got Corn Pops and the Demon Spew. Uh, we've got the Knights of the Brazen over here. They're already racking up skills, so they're still holding, but you can see the reinforcements from the AI just keep pouring into that vicinity. Check it out here. The Hellforged Host has arrived on site. They've already got 30 kills. Remember that these guys just get stronger with the more kills they get, and they're already obscenely strong. And so they're going to come in here and bail out the uh, Severed Claw, who is in a little bit over their head. And you're going to see here that the, the Hellforged Hosts are going to start chopping through these Marauder units with a fury. And if we take a look at their kills here again, already up to 51, so they now climbed over 50 kills. Patchy is again basically just getting ready to seek out his next target here. I'm kind of choosing where I want to bring him down. So right here there's quite a few enemy large units plus that sorcerer who's come back. So we're going to cut down this sorcerer and help get into these trolls. Meanwhile the AI just continues to pour it on thick on my right hand flank. And uh, Appius is really kind of holding us together over here with this magic. Because uh, otherwise we're starting to get pretty significantly outnumbered. Um, and it's becoming a real issue on that flank, so it's it's a pretty bloody fight. And I am taking casualties in multiple locations, more than I would like. Uh, but again, check out the Hellforge Toast. They already beat back several of those Marauder units. Now they're going to collapse in on some of these uh, Halberd units. And the Hellforge Toast is just on an absolute berserk streak. They're up over 100 kills already. And remember that it's this hell, uh, Hungering Blades here. So these guys are now getting um, huge bonuses. Uh, to the weapon strength and damage, um, so I mean this is going to be fantastic. Plus they get five melee attacks, so they are going to really be chopping away uh, with an insane fury for corn there. Now Patchy went chasing someone off into the distance. I think it was one of the routing troops, and then the same thing happened. Scribe is way back there in the distance on his corn mower. Um, again, I lost track of him when he chased off some warhounds early, and I really need him up here because this blob over here was kind of tailor made for Scribe. You can see yet even more reinforcements coming on here, one of which is the Weird Spawn, and now we've got a whole bunch of Marauder Horses coming up on this flank as well. It's not going to be great um, for the Hellforged Toast, but these guys aren't done yet. They are still slaughtering with the Fury. They just hit 200 kills. They saved the Severed Claw, and I've had to pull back um, some of my frontline units. Like, I'm going to have to pull back Buttered Corn here. I'm going to have to push forward with um, some of these other units. Uh, to try and hold back the reinforcements, because again, we're taking three armies with our one, and a huge weight of numbers here against us. Though you can see that Patchy has continued to do massive damage to their leaders, um, so they are losing sorcerers uh, aplenty here. They do have an exalted hero here. They've got another sorcerer over here that kind of keeps coming back into this fight and being annoying. I landed Patchy in the middle of this cavalry real quick, because I knew he would shred them up or tear around them, one of the two, very quickly. Sure enough, he gets in and causes some pretty extreme damage. Pushes them out of the fight. I've got some Warriors of Horn helping to hold these guys back too. Their heavy armor is quite good at that. The Hellforged Toast is starting to take a lot of javelins. The cavalry that came in over here. But any infantry unit that regroups, including the Sorcerer who's come back to support, just keeps getting chopped to bits. Look at that. Just They just hack these units apart. <laughs> so the Hellforged Toast, let's take a look at their kill count. Kill Scribe's going to love this. They're up to 270 just that unit. And meanwhile, Patchy is chopping down a Chaos Knight with lances. You can see their sorcerers dumping on me, but I decide to dump on them as well. So a big Searing Doom over there, and the Demon Spew kind of getting bailed out here because, again, they are just completely outnumbered. I've had to pull back a lot of units, and uh, the Demon Spew is kind of holding this all on their own. Doing a pretty marvelous job, honestly, all things considered. Um, trying to clean this up the best I can. A few more losses, and we should be able to convince the enemy army to just chain route. You can see here the enemy sorcerer Apache again, just kind of slowly walking towards them and not taking care of business. So CA has got to fix these collision and charge mechanics, which seem to be a mess. Check this out over here, the Hellforged Host. 
more infantry units came back after them, including the sorcerer. The sorcerer is getting chopped down, the infantry is getting chopped down, nothing is stopping these guys at this point. Another unit routes, and there's more marauders coming back, and they will also find their doom at the hands of Korn's baked goods, which are apparently unstoppable at the moment. They literally cannot be stopped. And at this point, the enemy army just chain routes from losses. They can't take it anymore. All that's left is a few spawn units. I did finally get Scribe back up to the front line so he could support. So here's his minions and his corn mower moving into position. So yeah, it's just a few spawn over here. I'm still fighting against the demon's view, so I'm going to send them some reinforcements that are much needed. I've got some halberds headed their way. Here comes our uh, corn on a stick. And they ought to chop through these. Chaos spawn rather rapidly with their anti-large. Don't really need any AP because it is um, chaos spawn, but like I said, they'll go down quickly. And Scribe is joining in on the fun as well. So a successful battle, albeit a bit of a bloody one, but skulls for the throne, blood for the god, as it is expected. I think this one's going to be a nice win for us. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed this one. Uh, I will see you back out on the campaign map. Just by sheer numbers there, we were up in a big fight. However, we won. Uh, it was a bit ugly. The AI attacked me in a way that I didn't expect them to, so I kind of ended up in a fight that I didn't want to be. I should have tried to pick a position that kept my back to the wall a little bit better, and we probably could have chopped through them more efficiently. But, I mean, some of these units just did absolutely insane. Look at the uh, Korn's Baked Goods here. 381 kills, 2,072 value. That is pretty obscene. And then uh, we got a ton of value out of um, our of Appius here. I forgot and had had a Scribe out of a battle for a little bit. We got a ton of value out of Patchy as well. I mean, Doom Knights, other units just hauling in the kills. I mean, look at the Knights of the Brazen here. Same thing with the Seekers of Slanesh. And this is just a Seeker, you know. We need to pull in the ROR Heart Seeker there. These demonettes, we could also bring in an ROR unit there too, so we could certainly make this army even stronger. Keep throwing that. So the Crystal Spires is in trouble, because uh, we put them in a pretty good world of hurt there. Now they may attack me again, but they'll start taking attrition here, and I won't, so we can probably flip this fight. Chalice. Um, I kind of want to keep having better relations with the Cornate factions because we're right next door to Valkia. So I'm hoping that will make them a little happier. Now, this guy is replenishing and going to come back at us. So unfortunately, I think I am going to have to give up the siege here because it's going to kill off too many of my units to do this. So let's break the siege. That's frustrating. Of course, they would have a whole bunch more armies. But whatever, we won. We won in a big way. And that's what we needed to do. Um, so we're going to just back up a little bit here and start to replenish, which should come quickly. These guys just came ashore. They're mostly just marauders, um, so I'm not terribly worried about them. If they come at me, we can try and dune them with some of my you know, single entity stuff here and work our way through them, and then we'll have to come back up here and finish them off. Hope you all enjoyed the episode. Air of Carthage signing out for now. I'll see you soon with more.